And welcome to World News. I'm Randolph Yamis for the latest stories. Myanmar President Ten Sein urged European Union leaders on Tuesday to drop all sanctions against his country as he held meetings in Brussels to discuss political and economic reforms pursued in the country since reforms started in 2011. European Council President Herman Van Rompuy congratulated President Utensein on the impressive change but added that reforms and transition were not completed. Western governments have dropped or eased sanctions imposed on the Myanmar in recognition of the reforms and international firms are keen to move into a country with vast resources located between China and India and part of a vibrant Southeast Asia heading for closer economic union in 2015. President Uden Sein also said his government wanted a modern, industrialized country and stressed the need to develop the agricultural sector and narrow development gaps between the regions. He called on the European Union to help to raise living standards and skills of its people. Meanwhile, in the U.S., a blanket of white-covered Minneapolis, Minnesota on Tuesday causing school shutdowns, canceled flights, and a slow commute for many residents. Forecasters warned the area could receive up to 10 to 12 inches of snow, with Wednesday bringing higher temperatures and sunshine. In Chicago, residents bundled up in heavy coats and braved the falling snow as they made their way around the city. Some stopped to enjoy the snowfall and take pictures, while others took cover under umbrellas. The storm was expected to move eastward over the Ohio Valley and then the central Appalachians and mid-Atlantic states on Wednesday, hitting Washington with its biggest snowfall in possibly two years, the National Weather Service said. Winter storm warnings were in effect for all or part of 16 states from the upper Midwest to the mid-Atlantic on Tuesday. In other news, Swedish furniture giant IKEA on Tuesday halted the sale of a range of almond chocolate cakes after health authorities in China confiscated nearly two tons of the cakes imported, saying they had found high levels of bacteria. The Shanghai Daily said traces of coliform bacteria were found in two isolated batches of the chocolate cake produced for IKEA by Swedish supplier Almondi. A spokesperson from IKEA later confirmed that the cakes had been destroyed in quarantine and sale of the items would be stopped in all markets. In a statement, IKEA said the bacteria found was not dangerous and that cakes from any of the two batches concerned were not being sold in Sweden. Moving on to India, the government railway police in Koderma district of India's eastern Jharkhand state recovered around 350 packets of explosives during routine checking on Tuesday. The explosives were found in a general coach of the train going from Hatia town to Patna city of eastern Bihar state. Confirming the recovery of explosives, government railway police of Koderma, Shibihari Tiwari, said that investigation is underway to identify the culprits. In a bid to protect wild animals like elephants, conservationists in Kenya started GPS tagging these animals to monitor their movement and to catch poachers that have been killing them for their tasks. Let's have the story. It's an icon of Africa, but for ivory poachers in Kenya, the elephant is a prime target. So conservationists are targeting them as well. Here in the Amboseli National Park, they are sedating, tagging and fitting six elephants with GPS collars so they can be tracked from the air and protected from increasingly sophisticated gangs of ivory poachers. It's dangerous work. It can go very well and sometimes it can just go upside down. You know, these are wild animals, they are not used to human beings. But veterinarian Dr. Jeremiah Poghon says such measures are essential if the African elephant is to be protected. The demand in Asia for ivory from elephant tusks is rising, and for poachers, the profit in killing an elephant is worth the risk of being caught. China and Thailand are the world's largest illegal ivory markets, supplied in part by poachers working in Amboseli. Steve Njumbi of the International Fund for Animal Welfare says more than 30,000 elephants have been killed by poachers in the past 16 months. There is a misconception amongst most of those who demand or want to use the ivory that ivory falls off elephants just like hair does. Message to them, people in China, people in Thailand, an elephant must die violently, very, very violently, and rangers at risk. 
and then probably the tusks are chopped off when it is still alive so that they are not caught at the site. The tusks end up as trinkets or expensive figurines favoured by Asia's rising affluent class. The illegal trade will be at the forefront of debate at this week's Convention for the International Trade of Endangered Species meeting in Bangkok. Meanwhile, here on the plains of southern Kenya, the conservation team says GPS collaring can only do so much. They say that unless the trade is stopped, the elephant's chances for long-term survival diminish by the day. Now in sports, Germany's Marcel Kittel wins the second stage on cycling's Paris-Nice race after overnight leader Frenchman Nasser Bouhani crashes out. Italy's Ilya Vivani claims the yellow jersey. Germany's Marcel Kittel won a dramatic 200.5 km second stage in cycling's Paris-Nice race on Tuesday after yellow jersey holder Nasser Bouhani crashed out and Italy's Ilya Viviani took over at the top. Light rain caused havoc in the middle part of the stage from Vimori to Cerilli as a number of riders came off their bikes. Buhani's incident where he fell and slammed into a brick wall at the 143-kilometer mark had the biggest consequences for the overall classification. With blood pouring from his face, he suffered required a stretcher and as he was unable to continue, his involvement in the race was over. A sprint finish ensued with Germany's Kittel, who missed the first stage sprint after suffering a puncture on Monday, doing enough to take it from Viviani and Australia's Leigh Howard. Viviani won the second sprint with 5 kilometers to go to climb to the top of the overall classification. It capped a near-perfect day where he also claimed the white and green jerseys with only the stage win eluding him. Viviani set second sets or second sevens uh, clear of second place Sylvain Chavanel from Omega Pharma quick step ahead of Wednesday's third stage. For our final news, Misao Okawa was pronounced by Guinness World of Records in our previous news. Now the lady is celebrating her 115th birthday and makes her the oldest woman living on earth. Flowers, a shawl, and of course a birthday cake. At 115, Misao Okawa is the world's oldest woman. Born in 1898, Okawa has lived through the turn of two centuries. She has three children, four grandchildren and six great-grandchildren. And the secret to her longevity? Sleep well, eat well, isn't that it? Wheelchair-bound Okawa had her favorite noodle soup and sushi for lunch. Perhaps a recipe for longevity because she is one of 50,000 centenarians in Japan. Happy birthday. And that ends the stories. Thanks for the company and see you again.